Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Dengue grips parts of India amid late monsoon rains. Pakistan among 54 poor nations that urgently need debt relief, says United Nations. And Sri Lanka to retain middle income status but seek concessional loans. And now for all the details, dengue outbreak has hit several Indian states including capital New Delhi and northern Uttar Pradesh state as late monsoon rains continue to batter the region. Most patients survive dengue but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 every year globally, many of them children who are not able to fight against it. Dengue is becoming a cause of concern for public health authorities in several Indian states and capital New Delhi as hospitals are reporting increasing cases of the vector-borne disease. The cases tally reached 1,258 in New Delhi on Monday. Dengue fever is common in South Asia, especially during the monsoon season, and there is no specific treatment. But with early detection and access to proper medical care, fewer than 1% of sufferers <coughs> die from the disease. This time the rains have been incessant in October unseasonal, not expected. Normally we don't expect rains like this. And that is what happens in dengue. What happens is there is water logging, there is stagnation of water, people become careless, they start, and it's humid and hot, people start wearing half-sleep clothes when they are not protected, so the mosquito bites, and that is how dengue's cases spirals. Hospitals in several cities across northern Uttar Pradesh are also overwhelmed with dengue patients following incessant rainfall over the past several days. Authorities across the country have stepped up awareness efforts and flogging exercises. Dengue fever, which can cause intense pain in muscles and joints, is spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The insect thrives in the megacities of the tropics. Most patients survive the disease, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 globally every year. Well, the United Nations said in a report on Tuesday that cascading global crisis has left 54 countries, including Pakistan, needing immediate debt relief to avoid even more extreme poverty. Reports suggest GDP growth of the country could fall to around 2% in the 2023 financial year, compared to previous forecast of 3 to 4% before the unprecedented flooding. Cascading global crises have left 54 poor countries, including the South Asian nation of Pakistan, in dire need of debt relief, the United Nations said on Tuesday. In a new report, the United Nations Development Programme said without immediate relief, these countries would see rising poverty levels and desperately needed investments in climate adaptation and mitigations will not happen. Hit hard by unprecedented floods, Pakistan is in the middle of a balance of payment crisis, with foreign reserves falling to 7.8 billion US dollars, which are barely equal to one month's worth of imports, a situation which has aggregated by a devalued currency and consumer prices rising 27%. Reports suggest GDP growth of the country could fall to around 2% in the 2023 financial year, compared to previous forecast of 3 to 4% before the floods. Finance Minister Ishagdar earlier on Sunday said there will be no request for debt restructuring and Pakistan will honour all commitments amid concerns that the country could default on its surveying debt commitments. Efforts to cool an overheating economy, contain the current account deficit and introduce economic reforms have been welcomed by the International Monetary Fund, which has set such changes as preconditions for a financial bailout. 
And moving on, scores of traders and shopkeepers in Balochistan province have raised their concern over the delayed Surrey Abroad expansion project and said many of them have lost their businesses after their shops were demolished. They blamed it has been over three years, but the Pakistani authorities are least bothered about their plight. Hundreds of traders and shopkeepers in Quetta in Balochistan province of Pakistan have expressed their concern over the delayed Sarya Road expansion project that they say has severely impacted their businesses. They said thousands of shops were also demolished without any planning as part of the construction and they are waiting for project to be completed for the past three years so that they can start their businesses again. It was meant to provide relief to the people, but apart from traffic problems, residents are also suffering from various diseases due to the dust. ऑपरेट किया लेकिन बदकिस्मती के साथ इन्होंने मलबे तो बहुत जल्दी गिरा दिए लेकिन तामीरात के काम जो है ना बहुत ही स्लो हैं ये तकरीबन पूरा सरयाब कस्टम से लेकर इरिगेशन कॉलोनी तक जो है ना तकरीबन ये कुछ नहीं बनता है तेरह चौदह पंद्रह किलोमीटर का जो है डिस्टेंस बनता है इसको सबको जो है इन्होंने डिसमेंटल कर दिया सब सारा गिरा दिया है लेकिन काम भी फिर उस तरह होना चाहिए था फिर सब पे काम होना चाहिए जिस तरह आपने सब डिसमेंटल किया फिर सब पे काम होना चाहिए Local said the Pakistani authorities have not been doing their work properly and are not bothered about their plight. Despite being a naturally rich province, people of Balochistan have long been suffering with abject poverty and underdevelopment under Pakistan's illegal occupation. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan President's office on Tuesday said the island nation will remain a middle-income country, but would request the World Bank to grant it some loans generally offered to poorer nations. This came after a cabinet spokesperson said Sri Lanka was considering to downgrade its economic status to low-income country in order to get access to concessional funding to resolve its crisis. Sri Lanka will remain a middle-income country but would request the World Bank to grant it some loans generally offered to poorer nations, the President's office said on Tuesday, clarifying a cabinet spokesperson's earlier comments on the matter. The island nation of 22 million is facing its worst economic crisis in more than seven decades. And spokesperson Bandula Gunawardhane said earlier in the day that the government would seek to change its economic status to low-income country for easier funding. President Ranil Vikramasinghe's office, however, said the status change would not happen. We will request the World Bank to grant the country eligibility to obtain loans offered by its arm, the International Development Association, the office said in a statement. Sri Lanka's per capita GDP was $3,815 in 2021, which had placed it in the lower middle economy category, according to the World Bank. The local World Bank office in Colombo had no immediate comment on the Sri Lankan request. It said it would continue its discussions with Sri Lanka and that the key priority was to move ahead with debt restructuring and economic reforms to put the country's growth back on track. And Nepal's most high-profile cricketer Sandeep Lamichane was sent to seven-day police remand on Monday over rape allegations filed against him by a teenager. The suspended cricket captain was arrested on October 6th on his return to Kathmandu from Doha. The Kathmandu District Court on Monday extended former Nepal cricket captain Sandeep Lamichane's police remand by seven days to further investigate the rape allegations against him. The country's most high-profile cricketer Lamichane was taken into police custody upon his return to Kathmandu from Doha. He was suspended as Nepal's captain last month and left the Caribbean Premier League after being accused of raping a 17-year-old minor. Sandeep had earlier in a social media post termed the allegations as baseless. He said that he will fully cooperate in all stages of investigation and will fight a legal battle to prove his innocence. The 25-year-old is a leg spinner and was appointed as Nepal cricket team captain in 2021. He formally captained the under-19 Nepal cricket team in 2016 during the Asia Cup. He rose to fame when he became the first from his country to play in the Indian Premier League back in 2018 when he featured for Delhi Capitals. 
And four Tiger Cubs made their first public debut on Monday at a safari park in India's eastern Siliguri city. India was home to an estimated 40,000 tigers at the turn of the last century, but poaching and the loss of habitat have brought them to the brink of extinction. Four tiger cubs, two males and two females were released in the Bengal Safari Park in India's eastern Siliguri city for the public viewing for the first time on Monday. The authorities said that a female tigress named Sheila had given birth to the four cubs on 22nd of March this year. The cubs Shera, Shiva, Tejil and Tara were seen prancing and playing around in the park to the delight of the visitors. They are currently the biggest tourist attraction at the zoo at this point. Tigress Sheila ke four bachche the, two male, two female. Shera, Shiva, Tejal, Tara. Wo charo ko aaj pratham bar means pehli bar after their birth aaj safari me choda gaya. India was home to an estimated 40,000 tigers at the turn of the last century, but poaching and the loss of habitat brought them to the brink of extinction. Destruction of tigers' forest habitat clashes with local communities and ceaseless hunting for its fur and bone, which are used in traditional medicine, are the main drivers of a decline in the population of tigers. Scores of Sikh devotees on Tuesday offered prayers and took holy dip at the famous Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to celebrate the 488th birth anniversary of Guru Ram Das, the fourth Sikh spiritual leader. Guru Ram Das is prominently known to be the founder of the holy city of Amritsar. Hundreds of devotees offered prayers and took holy dip at the famous Golden Temple shrine in Amritsar city of India's northern Punjab state to mark the 488th birth anniversary of Guru Ram Das, the fourth Sikh spiritual leader, on Tuesday. The devotees celebrated the occasion by listening to singing of sacred hymns inside the revered Sikh place of worship and pondered upon the teachings of the spiritual leader, known for his humility, service and deep devotion. Guru Ram Das, who was born in 1534 AD, is believed to be the founder of Sikhism's holiest city Ramdaspur, which later came to be known as Amritsar. He also composed 638 hymns in 30 classical ragas or musical modes. It was a good day today. We have a lot of people who have come to the Guru Parun, and we have a lot of people who have come to the Guru Parun. We have a lot of people who have come to the Guru Parun. It was a good day today. 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 जो सोच है, जो सुख, दुखे दे साया है, सब नू खुशियां पर हैं, अर्गट हो, लोग कम सब नू खुशियां मेल सारे नू। As part of the celebrations, a special religious procession was also taken out in Amritsar city earlier on Monday, which also saw participation of groups performing gatka, the Sikh form of martial art. Majority of India's Sikh population, which forms two percent of the more than one billion population, resides in northern India, particularly in the state of Punjab. And in national capital New Delhi. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Dengue grips parts of India amid late monsoon rains. Pakistan among 54 poor nations that urgently need debt relief, says United Nations. and Sri Lanka to retain middle-income status but seek concessional loans. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.